Is, is there something that you can say to them to encourage them? Uh, absolutely. Just get as much information as possible. True story. Yeah. And once you gather all of your information, you're able to make an informed choice. Gotcha. Mm. Gotcha. So a lot of women don't know uh, about our treatment. Mm. And... Um, and it's it's not so much that gynecologists don't want to offer you know the information. It's I think historically um, it wasn't a procedure that they did, and I think it just didn't uh, come to mind uh, as an as an option. Now, again, they've been for you know for for decades and 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 and, and longer doing uh, you know these surgical treatments. Mm-hmm. And our um, treatment, our non-surgical treatment, has really only become popularized in the last couple of decades, mm-hmm. um, and, and even more so I'd say in the last decade. And so, um, you know, what's what's nice about about the treatment is that uh, even the American College of Gynecology, which is the main you know scientific uh, or the main uh, body of the gynecologist, um, um, they have now come out and said that our treatment is equivalent to myomectomy, um, which is which is which is exciting. So now, at this point, we have um, you know something to offer patients that's uh, non-surgical and as effective as, as myomectomy in treating the fibroids. So uh, just as Ms. King said, I think it's very important to just get uh, all the information. And you know what, if, if your gynecologist, for whatever reason, doesn't mention, you know, our treatment, and, and it may be that it's not right for you. I mean, that mm-hmm. might be, you know, why they didn't mention it. Then, uh, but be sure to ask. And, yes. And, 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 and yeah, they can always refer yeah. you on to us. You can just say, hey, I heard about this thing. It's called right. UFE. <laughs> As we always say, take you, charge of your treatment. Yes. Take True charge. story. Ask, be ask your own question. healthcare advocate. Correct. Ms. Thomas used to say that. We have a caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes. How are you tonight? I'm good. That's I have good. a question. What's Can, your name? Yeah, what's your name? Just about, my name is Joanne. Joanne, where are you from? <laughs> from Queens. Okay. All right, Queens so we got now. Joanne from Queens on the line. Okay, so what's your question? Okay, so my question is, could you be diagnosed with fibroids and then like, two or three years later they said it's not there anymore? Like, Mm. Um, you know, the answer is that um, did they when they said it's not there anymore? How did they? Well, uh, they don't ha- see it anymore. Like before, they had told me I had like small, really small fibroids. Okay. And now they're saying this, they, they don't see it anymore. Did um, I, I don't I didn't ask your age. Have you have you gone through menopause yet or? No, I'm thirty nine. Thirty nine. Okay. Um, and, and when they didn't see it anymore, were they looking with like an MRI or they looking with ultrasound or? No, just, yeah, like a regular ultrasound. Okay. So, you know, it may be the case that, uh, if they're so small that, um, you know, ultrasound it really, it's, it's very good. Um, but, uh, it's, it's really an art, you know, to, to make sure that you're seeing the, you know, entire uterus. And if they're so small, it may be the case, even though when they did the second ultrasound, they, they, they didn't see them. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and but that's you know it's a good sign. I mean, if they're that small, that they're not going to be seen potentially. They're pretty small. Mm. Okay. But one thing I think we can say is that to you, if you have a gynecologist, correct? Yes, you I see? do. Yeah, and just make sure that you know you keep track of them and make sure that correct. they're aware that you had this issue before and to keep an eye on things. Well, we are because it's the same gynecologist. Yeah, that's okay. good. And, right. and just and monitor yourself too in terms of your your symptoms. You know, if you start bleeding more than usual, well, or yeah, if you pain, have get you well, s- Joanne, some of the other things. Well, it's good to know mentioned. that if in the future they ever became larger, mm-hmm. that you have different options, not just exactly. surgical. Well, that's what I was thinking because I know a few people who probably I will tell about this procedure that you awesome. guys are talking about. W- one thing I will say to add to that, Joanne, is that. Um, uh, you know, sometimes we see very dramatic uh, fibroids where they're very large. Um, but interestingly enough, often the ones that bleed the most are yes. ver- are very small, and um, oh. and, and they're just you know a couple uh, or a few uh, very small fibroids that happen to be again more uh, towards the uterine cavity. Um, but it's very interesting that the ones that bleed the most are often the smallest. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, All righty. Yeah. Well, and thank you for right. calling. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. And, and if there's any like real question about if they still are there, if those might be causing uh-huh. some of your symptoms, um, you can always ask your gynecologist if, if maybe an MRI is the right study for you because um, an MRI they're they're amazing. I make sure all my patients get MRIs before we do the procedure. And okay. like and sometimes when, as I said before, if, if you might not see any fibroids or see one or two. Uh-huh. On ultrasound, you'll see 10, you know, <laughs> at times on, on the MRI. MRI. Yeah. It's, there's, it's, wow. a, it's a very good study in MRI. So that's the thought, MRI. Okay. All right. Thank Maybe you for I'll your question. 
Thank you very much for your answers. You All right. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Yep. Okay, thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Bye. So, so is that something that we should throw out there? Is that um, you should get an MRI? Because you're saying that you can see a clearer picture. Uh, definitely. Um, before, I mean, I, I think, you know, the first, first and foremost, I always recommend you be seen by a gynecologist. And that's mm. always before patients come to see us. Uh, you know, that, that's something they have to, have to do. Mm. Um, but also before they see us, it's really best if an MRI is performed. And that way, I, I take a look at it. You know, being a radiologist, I take a look at the MRI. And um, that way, when we have our, um, our discussion, you know, about the procedure and whether it's the right procedure for the patient, we can, you know, know we're talking about fibroids and know that's the issue. Also, um, in rare cases, you know, bleeding can be caused um, or, you know, bulk symptoms can be caused by uh, other things in the uterus. And, um, uh, for example, there's a condition called adenomyosis, um, and, um, and that can um, uh, be uh, uh, an issue, you know, that, that, that may not be fibroid-related. Now, interestingly enough, our procedure also does treat that uh, relatively effectively. At least the studies so far have shown that. Um, but uh, also, you know, God forbid that there's you know, cancer or, or some other uh, explanation for it. You know, MRI is really a good way to take a look at that. Also, if you're over 35 um, and you're having abnormal bleeding or heavy, you know, bleeding, uh, this is, again, why we tell you to see a gynecologist. They will uh, often do endometrial sampling um, just to make sure that it's related to what we call hyperplasia, where basically the endometrium is just you know, too big mm-hmm. and causing the bleeding rather than cancer or some other problem. So um, you know, a- MRI is a very good study. So that combined with um, seeing the gynecologist before patients come to see us, really it's, it's, it's the patients who come to see us are, uh, you know, gung ho to do our our treatment, and well, uh, we have to check to make sure that you have fibroids <laughs> <laughs> before yeah, we go sense. in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, um, we're gonna do a quick break. We're gonna take a very very quick break. You're listening to Health in Harlem on WHCR ninety point three FM, New York. Remember, you can call us though. Um, when we come back, you can call us two one two six five zero six nine zero three. That's two one two six five zero six nine zero three. If you have any questions comments or concerns about tonight's show you're listening to health in harlem stay tuned we'll be right back whcr 90.3 fm new york hi this is brother leroy of whcr inviting you to a book signing with mayor david dinkins thursday march 27th at the harlem branch library 124 street across from marcus garvey park at 5 p.m It's a Cornelius Ricks Behind the Bench Forum, featuring Mayor David Dinkins speaking on his autobiography, A Mayor's Life. The community is welcome. Admission is free. Brother Leroy of WHCR is the moderator at this book signing by Mayor David Dinkins. Thursday, March 27th. Information, 347-413-2774. 347-413-2774. 2774. The community is welcome. WHCR 90.3 FM, New York. Welcome back to Health in Harlem, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Maurice Selby. And this is Sean Shivers. And tonight we have Dr. Neil Resnick and we have Miss K- Coretta King. And we're talking about fibroids tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And there's something important that we mentioned and that we have alternatives in treatment of these fibroids. Uterine fibroid embolization is one of those alternatives and something that Dr. Resnick and Miss King have been doing for a while. And we got the experts here. You know, when you walk in, I don't. So the thing is, I got a little inside scoop, man, because I've been in these interventional radiology um, operating rooms, and it's like Star Trek when you walk in there. You talk about fancy schmancy gadgets everywhere, and the stuff that they're doing is so cool, um, and this is something that is available to people in the Harlem community. Mm-hmm. This is going down at Harlem Hospital and other health and hospitals corporations facilities uh, throughout New York City, and remember, ladies and gentlemen, that these facilities are funded by New York City. They are there to serve you regardless of your ability to pay. Absolutely. And this is something that is a, a viable option 
for women out there and it's something that you should inquire about um just get information as miss king said information it doesn't hurt you it empowers you Absolutely. to make an informed decision the best decision for yourself and then one thing i want to always say is that quality hair quality health care is not a privilege it is your right true story so <laughs> if you're in pain Go get it checked. Yes. No matter what it is. So let's get a, a quick rundown of what we talked about. Um, uterine fibroids, Dr. Resnick, you said they're, these are essentially tumors that are growing. Benign. Yeah, benign mm -hmm. tumors. Benign tumors. Yeah, masses in the uterus mm -hmm. and uh, in the uterine wall. And uh, they can cause a number of symptoms. Uh, often women come to us when there's very heavy menstrual bleeding. Um, but we also see women who have what they call bulk symptoms because these, uh, these masses in the uterus are pushing on other structures, you know, around the uterus. So uh, there's urinary frequency. You have to urinate all the time. Uh, constipation um, called dyspareunia where you can have pain during intercourse. And uh, also uh, heavy, um, or should I say, severe pain uh, during uh, or between uh, menstrual uh, periods. Wow. Yeah. And so, um, as we were mentioning, that, uh, you know, there are many options, uh, treatment options, and uh, some of them medical, um, some of them surgical. Um, but um, the women that uh, we're treating in interventional radiology are those who want the non-surgical treatments that uh, have shown to be uh, as effective as, as myomectomy. Wow. And the question I have is, so, so if there is a, a young lady or a female out there who, who wants to get um, checked for fibroids, they would have to get a referral through the PCP in order to, because you're a specialist, correct? Correct. Okay. Or the gynecologist. Or the gynecologist, okay. Yeah, one, one thing that we, we do at, at Harlem Hospital, and I happen to think that we do this very well, the treatment of fibroids, um, and that's one reason why I'm so happy you guys invited us on the program, mm -hmm. so thank you, um, is we actually have... Um, one of our IR nurses, now our field's interventional radiology, so IR is what we call it for short. We have one of our IR nurses actually speak with each patient and help direct them uh, to make sure that they get the, uh, all the um, pieces in line before, you know, they come see us. And so we call them, uh, you know, this procedure we call it U uh, UFE, uterine fibroid embolization. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we call them UFE uh, patient navigators. Mm. And so uh, you basically can call us and, um, and then we can, uh, you know, one of our nurses, like Miss King, yeah, we'll, we'll call you back. Yeah, you might end up speaking to me. That's yeah. what's up. <laughs> she'll, she'll make sure you have all the pieces in line. You're seen by a oncologist. You. You, yeah. you get your MRI and, um, and then come see us. And, and, uh, and what's that number? Second call? It's a 212-939-4291. And what's the, and 4291? Correct. 212-939-4291. Mm -hmm. so Got it. Okay. And just really quick, uh, Miss King, for women that maybe have some reservations about this or, uh, or really what are some of the reservations that women have um, about this procedure and is there anything that you say or try to... A lot Do of people don't understand. know about the procedure, mm. so it's it's news to them. Mm -hmm. I think knowledge is key Correct. with this particular procedure because before people were just looking at options um, dealing with fibroids. Um, the options would basically be surgical, potentially having a hysterectomy, um, trying to control it through diet or other or hormone therapy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so now this is just another option. Um, it would be interesting to hear the feedback about like how other how people the the how people weigh the pros and cons because mm. honestly I've just seen a lot of people who decided to get the procedure and they're very happy with it. Got so it. I mean it'll, it'll be interesting to see you know how and other don't people. Even know when I'm yeah, here, yeah, I feel like a lot of people just don't even know about this procedure. The UFE, the uterine fibroid embolization. You know, um, one thing that's uh, interesting, like you mentioned, the, the kind of Star Trek, I think you said, uh, kind of nature of, of, of what we do. And, and, and that's why I love it, because it's, it's very high tech. But mm -hmm. what's nice about it is you can use these tools that we have um, that are very high tech to do these most minimally invasive procedures. So, you know, sometimes you'll hear about, um, you know, surgeons say they're minimally invasive. And that's, that's great. They'll use scopes and mm -hmm. all this stuff. And, and that is, like, a lot less invasive than getting, you know, a big cut. True. Um, but... Um, but really, you know, we put a needle into the artery after we, you know, of course, clean it up, numb it up, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we do our whole procedure through just a little puncture into the vessel. And when we're done, we take out the, uh, the needle, we put a Band-Aid on. And, uh, that, that is that, wild. That's essentially you said a Band-Aid. It sounds like we put a Band-Aid. <laughs> no sutures. Literally. Yeah. A Band-Aid. No yeah. suture and no, like, 
sewing up the skin or anything like that. It's just yeah, it's it's it's, it's pretty. That's neat. wild, man. Yeah. Uh, so take advantage, ladies and gentlemen. Now, before we wrap up, um, what would you say is the most important message for our listening audience tonight? I, I think, like Miss King said, just to get educated, to get informed, and uh, make sure to advocate for yourself too. So, yeah. you know, make sure that if if you're hearing these different options. Um, you're at the gynecologist's office, just make sure that, you know, just to ask them about this procedure if they didn't mention it to you because it may have just either slipped their mind or maybe they know that it's not ideal for you, but you want to make sure that you do ask about it. Yeah, and we definitely want to say is that if you're walking around in pain, it's not normal. So mm. go get Listen yourself to your body. checked. Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. Listen Anything to your else? body. Listen to your body. I Listen like to that. Your body. your body will not steer you wrong. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Resnick. Thank you very much, Miss King. Thank you. Thank you. So this was an awesome it's show. I've, been I've, learned, <laughs> I've learned so much. Yeah. I think our listening so audience much. would agree, and we want to thank our callers also for calling in and asking very much so. wonderful questions. Mm-hmm. Um, they definitely helped enlighten us. I'm glad to us start and informing people about this yes. because, you know, we need to know the options available for us. True story. So we can live better lives, you know? True yes. story. Yeah, y'all gonna be back. Happy, healthy lives. Yeah, y'all gotta come back now. <laughs> you didn't know that, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's good. Yeah, sign a contract <laughs> before you leave. <laughs> yeah, um, we'd be glad to. Yeah, we'd be glad to. We <laughs> really glad enjoyed to. it. Oh, and it oh, will oh, be man. our pleasure as well. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank my man, Sean Shivers. I haven't seen him in two weeks. You know, I want to thank God my boy, Lee. Mo. But everybody, <laughs> please make sure you tune in next week. It's National Nutrition Month, and we're going to have our girl, Vanessa Sawyer, of yeah. Hip Hop Health. Vanessa and Sawyer. our topic next week is just going to be, it's summertime, eating healthy, getting ready for the summer. That's what's up. Yeah. It's spring now, right? We just, t- it's spring yeah. today, actually. Today's Today's the first started day of spring. spring. So we're getting closer and closer. Um, also, we want to thank Miss Valerie Wright. She is the producer of Health in Harlem. Girl. And we also want to thank you, our listening audience, for tuning in. Can't have a show without an audience. So thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, you have Vinny B of the Vinny B Showcase coming up next. He is in the studio, ready to go. So just keep you, keep that dial right here on WHCR. As Sean said, we will be right back next week, Thursday, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. So tune in. Um, in the words of Miss, this show is dedicated to, this, to the memory of Miss Gloria Thomas, Harlem. Take care of yourself. WHCR 90.3 FM, New York.
us Can't you see the sign of the time We're living in And knowledge will guide you through. Don't you be the devil too? No, you can't guide a people without a vision. You shall surely go astray. Come on.